says, yes, I'm one of those people who go to that church. The cave ministers. And it got Jesus in a door. Now we're going to when we come back, we're going to show you who wearing that shirt. As a red talk show, here's a young man that was wearing that shirt. What's your name, young man? I'm Brandon Sanders from right here in Mobile, Alabama. All right. Uh, Brandon, tell my viewers a little bit of what you do. What I do, well, I'm a, I'm a minister at the Wings of Life Ministries here in Mobile. I'm also a Christian rap artist. And, uh, and I just like to go out into the community and tell people no matter where you come from, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you've experienced in life or what the world has tried to put on your back, that God's got a plan for you mm -hmm. and can't nothing stop the plan He has for you except you and your own choices. You are so right. Now, I'm going to want you to tell my viewers, okay, because I, I heard you before you sung on our show, uh, you were saying something happened when you was a kid. Tell my viewers about uh, that situation with you and uh, your pop and your mom. Tell yeah, them. you know, I... Uh, I come from a from a rough breed, you know. My dad, he was uh, he was uh, him and his brothers and his dad, you know, they were pretty rough guys. They liked to fight. They were uh, convicts and criminals. And uh, my dad met my mom while going to prison to visit her dad. So you know, he got out of prison and came to live with my grandfather. Ended up getting married. When I was a young child, you know, my daddy killed my mom. He beat her to death. And you know, he had locked us in the house and we were looking out the back window. Mm -hmm. And we uh. You know, my mom was choking on her own blood, so, uh, you know, it was a pretty rough experience. There was really no grieving process. I went from there into the system, you know, into foster care and group homes and things of that nature. Foster care and group home? Yes. Okay. Seen your mom get killed? Seen my mom get killed. You, what, you were looking out the window when you was looking? We was looking out the window. We was beating on the window, actually, but we couldn't get out the house. We was locked in the house, you know, and uh, we were scared, you know, but... Uh, it was an experience that I won't forget, but I use it as motivation you know, to uh, okay. tell people that you know, no matter what life throws your way, man, when you give your life to God, all things are possible. Okay, now, as you coming up as a young man, you got into some things. Yeah, well, you know, I was, uh, I never really had a father, never really had a man in my life to okay. show me how to be a man or teach me morals, and so I think all young men want to know what it means to be a man. So I began to search for that, and I found it in uh, in drugs, in okay. gangs, uh, hanging around people that were older than me, trying to do what they did, trying to fit into their crowd. You know, I felt good. I felt like, you know, like, hey, it made me feel a part of something. But eventually my addiction took over my life. I can't remember the first time I ever got arrested for alcohol or drug-related crime. I think I was 14 years old. And uh, it carried over into my adult life. Uh, I had some good opportunities as a young man. I didn't graduate high school, but I went to work offshore and learned a good trade. Okay. But my addiction always interfered with everything I tried to do. You know, I lost my jobs because of my addiction. I eventually got hooked on crack cocaine. I started out snorting powder and ended up smoking cocaine. And so I couldn't hold a job. I couldn't keep a household. Um, I never wanted to be like my father, but even in my teens when I started dating, I realized that I had an anger problem too. Okay. And so I was actually an abuser myself. You know, it's not something that I consciously wanted to become, but I realized that I was controlling and I was possessive. And uh, I began to abuse my girlfriends the same way my father had abused my mother. And I always blamed it on the drugs and the alcohol. You know, there were times when I would get clean, but nothing never stuck. I would always go back to my old way. And so this just continued for a long time until I got to a point in my life where, man, I just wanted to die. And I wanted to kill myself, man. No. I, I just got to the point where, you know, I said, man, if this is how I got to live, and I was living in the streets, I was homeless, I was bathing in a five-gallon bucket, sleeping behind a shot house, you know, sometimes it, it was crazy. That's, That's where my life had got to because of my drugs. And uh, nobody wanted anything to do with me. I had stole from everybody who ever tried to help me. I had bit every hand that tried to feed me. And so I found myself out there alone, and it was during this time that I really began to cry out to God. Okay, you got to fall all the way down. Look fall up all the way Jesus. down. I mean, okay. I had beat my head against that brick wall so many times. Okay. And, you know, and my head was busted wide open, and it was at this point when I was really, really, really thinking about killing myself. I mean, I actually went and bought some dope and a box of razor blades and said, this is it. No. I'm going to get high tonight, man. I'm just going to end my life. And I just began to cry out to God, man, and say, God, you know, 
I've heard about Jesus my whole life. You know, I've seen the church thing, but, you know, none of it ever worked for me. I said, God, I just want to know you in spirit and truth. I need to know that you're real. I need something in my life that's going to stick. You know, and I just, uh, that night my life changed. Okay. You know, that night when I got to that point where I was that broken, mm -hmm. that's when God stepped in and began to rebuild me into the man that he had created me to be. Okay, and now you are... Now I'm a full-time minister, man. I go out preaching. You know, I preach all over. I go into the public schools and talk to the young people about drugs and about choices. Uh, I go to the bridge, which is an adolescent treatment center, and I have Bible study with the guys out there. Uh, okay. We do a lot of things. I work with the Wings of Life full-time, which is a faith-based alcohol, drug, and treatment center. And so I get to use my experience uh, and, and, and what God has done for me to encourage them to make the right choices, which first of all is surrendering your life to Christ. Because, man, if you ain't burning for God, ain't nothing going to stick. It, it's, I mean, it's just not yeah. going to work, is it? I mean, you know, I was in mental hospitals as a young man, as a teenager. You know, I was in mental hospitals. Mm -hmm. I was on all kind of medication. I was diagnosed with all kind of mental illnesses, bipolar, multiple personality disorder, PTSD. And, you know, they told me it was the way I was. You know, they told me my anger came from my dad. My addiction came from my dad. And it was part of my genetics, that it was something that I just had to learn how to cope with. Mm -hmm. And they could give me medication, and they could... Uh, you know, teach me how to cope. Okay. But God said that I'm an overcomer. He says that through the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony, I overcome this world and the enemy. And so that's what I've stuck to, man, and that's what's worked for me is the blood of Jesus. So the first choice you need to make is to surrender your life to Christ. And if you're out there watching this show, maybe you got a loved one, or maybe you yourself are struggling. You know, whatever you're struggling with, you need to know that the answer is God, that you may have had religion in the past, you may have been to church and practiced all the traditions, you know, you may be able to jump up and speak in tongues and do backflips, but if it ain't in your heart, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ deep inside where you know him intimately, then none of this other stuff's going to work. And that's where he wants to get. That's why he made man, so that he could fellowship with him. That's why Jesus came and died, so that you and I could be reconciled to the Father. And that's what this is all about. And so since I made that decision, man, my life is just, I'm not going to say it's been easy, but it's been great. Yeah. I still go through tough times, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, I struggle, man. I still have things in my flesh I struggle with. I fall, but I get back up because I know that God is able. I know that God is merciful. I know that God's grace is at work in my life. So it's not the falling that makes me, but it's the getting back up that determines who I am in Christ. Uh, are you still married? Uh, no, no, okay. ma'am. I actually, I was living... That's one testimony I use sometimes. I was living with a woman for eight years, and okay. I thought we was married. Okay. You know, according to Alabama law. Yeah, yeah, common you know law, man. And I, really, I, really, if they spend a weekend, yeah, that's common know, law. Hey, you don't even let nobody spend you know, a night at y'all, but that's common law. If I would have owned something, she could have took everything I had. I'm you know what I mean? I ain't yeah. had nothing. You know yeah. what I mean? But, uh, <laughs> no, man, you know, that's one thing that God dealt with me on. You know, I didn't know that, you know, we needed to be married in the eyes of God. That's right. When I got my life together, I mean, God really called me. He hit me in such a powerful way. I kind of related to Saul on the road to Damascus. It was mm -hmm. an experience I could no longer deny who God was. And I began to read his word. I began to study. Yes. I found my way to the wings of life through a series of miraculous events. And, man, it just, she wasn't ready to make that commitment to God. Okay. And the Lord showed me that in order for me to keep moving forward with him, She'd either have to change or I'd have to let her go. And so that's one of the hardest decisions I ever made because she has stuck by me through years of addiction. But she was an addict too. Okay. She was my road dog. You know, okay. We rode the streets together. Now we that was, yeah. Together. Yeah, that kind of bad when yeah, both of y'all. I want you to be off and try to stop yeah. them. And, you know, we did that a few times. Ms. Okay. Miss Jazzy, that's what I love about the Wings of Life. Is the Wings of Life is one of the very few facilities in this country that takes married couples. They allow a husband and wife to come in together. And I tell, yeah. you, I tell you from experience, being a man, I would get a good job. I would try to get myself together, and she would still be dabbling, and it would eventually pull me back in. Okay. Or she would try to get herself together, and I would still be drinking and smoking dope, and I would eventually pull her back in. And so it never works for one person to get clean and go home to a mate who's still addicted. Who's still addicted. Who's still addicted. That timing with you all are off. You know, when you put the timing yeah, chain on exactly. old school trucks or vehicles, you have to bump it. Bump it to get that chain in line, and it wasn't in line. It wasn't in line. But you in line now, you I'm man. in line now. And, and, you know, when I made that decision, I didn't just make a decision for Christ. I made a commitment. A commitment. I committed my life to him that whatever it would take, 
you know, because he hit me in such a powerful way. And I knew who I was without Jesus. I seen where my life had taken me. I seen where my own decision making had taken me, you know. Because, man, I, you know, I wasn't no chump. You know, I worked hard. You know, I had money. I did, a, you know, the things that everybody else does. But I was in bondage, man. I was a slave to crack cocaine. It was pimping me. I mean, you know, I had lost all self-respect, all morals. You know, I was out there, man, to, to nothing. Ended up homeless in the street, man, begging for food. That's where it had taken me. And so, uh... How old are you, brother? I'm 37 years old now. You're a young man. God's blessed me. Thank You're a young man. Yeah. Uh, you, you look good, and you're healthy. If somebody just met you, just seen you, they wouldn't know none of your past. That's why Amen. God uh, laid it on my heart to yeah. ask you to help someone. If, if it was someone that needed some help, and they needed, like, the wings of life or something, can you give them... Some a number where they make and get in touch Amen. with you or, or with the wings of life or yeah. something because there's somebody watching this show needs some help. Yeah. God laid it on my heart to say interview him Amen. and uh, I want you to give out a phone number where they make and call if they need help or need strength to get off of what they feel they can't kick. Amen. So Amen. can you give out a phone? Yeah, number? the number to the wings of life okay. is two five one. Four three two five two four five, and you'll ask for Pastor Glenn Alexander. He's our intake pastor. He'll talk with you and counsel with you. And uh, if we have a bed open, man, we, you know we'll try to get you in there. You know, like I tell everybody who asks me about our program, you know, a program can't save you. It can only give you an opportunity. You know, but ultimately the choice has to be up to you. But you know, the wings of life is full of people who love. Man, they really show the love of God, and they'll love you through this process help you through this process and give you every tool you need to get your life back on track. 251-432-5245. You know, people think, Brandon, that they have to wait to the first of the year to change their life, but you can change it right now. Amen. At this moment, just say, I'm going to call and get some help. I'm just not going to do it anymore. Amen. I'm just not going to do it anymore. When I was partying and enjoying myself and drinking, when I said we were going to get drunk, I meant that. When I said I wasn't coming back, I let them clues go. Amen. And I meant that. So we just got to be men and women of our word. Amen. So if they're going to need some help, get a number out one more time for the Wings of Life. 251-432-5245. All right. When we come back now, we're going to talk with him and Miss Care Coax. Uh, they've got a unity walk they want to tell you about. Jazz Red, peace out. Jazz Red Talk Show. And we are back now. They've got some information they want to tell you about a unity walk. We're going to go to Miss Carrie Coax here. How you doing, Miss Carrie I'm Coax? I'm doing great. And, and you look good. You Thank you. Working for the Lord. And, oh, yes. You know, this lady got a sweet spirit. I know y'all feel it through the TV, television tube. <laughs> Miss Carrie Coax, what do you want to tell my viewers about your unity walk? Well, first of all, let me explain what the unity event is about. Mm -hmm. It's about forgiveness. You know, first it starts with yourself, and the unity event is about, you know, just forgiving all of those that you're holding, holding something against. Okay. Okay, and this, this takes place at downtown Mobile, mm -hmm. and um, we start off at Spanish Plaza Park, and this walk goes down to the cannon. But this year, we, we, we're going to slow it down. We want to make it a little different. We want you to take all those things that are bothering you, the unforgiveness, we want you to take it down to the cannon and leave it there. And leave In it there. other words, when we make that U-turn, you should come back different than when you went down. Okay. And this uh, event, again, it bridges the gaps, generation, race, denomination. It's not about a denomination. It's not about a race. It's about love and forgiveness. So we're inviting everyone out this year come take this walk of unity with us we'll be at the police department will be there at 9 a.m. okay that's when the walk will start okay. but, um, we'll be out uh, registering our walkers we'll be out as early as 6 a.m. Uh, signing the walkers up where does this uh, start where does it start Spanish Plaza Park and that's uh, right next to Mobile Chamber Mobile Chamber mm -hmm. yes ma'am how long how long y'all been doing this 
Oh, this is year number eight, new beginnings. Oh, uh, year number year eight. Year number eight, new beginnings. Two circles. Amen in all our lives. And uh, all day long we have praise and worship. We have speakers. And this year our, our guest speaker will be Brandon Sanders. Uh, we are trying to, we are taking church outside the walls. Okay. We are reaching those that are not coming into the churches. Now that's what I'm talking and about. And we invite the churches out every year to greet those that come to the altar to give their lives to Christ. Uh, but we really need our churches to step up because once this event is over, we're not a church and we have nowhere to send them. So we are asking that the ministers that and the, the ministers and the are represented deacons come, come out, come out they so they can pray people. for people and, and get them in a church. Amen. That, that's a great thing. You get them out there, all they got to do is come give. Amen. Amen. Because again, um, there are so many that are not coming inside the church walls for whatever reason. And uh, so we, we do this event every year to reach out to those in love. And um, we have so many people come from different areas, uh, Georgia, Mississippi, Florida. And uh, we, we have a choir, as a matter of fact, coming in from Atlanta, Georgia, Remnant, this year. Okay. We'll be on program. Um, we have a gentleman coming from Orlando, Florida. He'll be on program this year. So they're coming in from everywhere. They're saying, hey, we can lay down our differences. We can. And this is what this program is all about. Common ground. Amen. Come to common Amen. ground. We just so honored to have uh, Brother Brandon Sanders speaking this year. Uh, we, we want the speakers out there that can reach all. That can reach all. That yeah. can reach people where they are. That's right. And so, Mr. Brandon uh, gave his testimony. Amen. And Amen. people needed to know that. You know, some people be ashamed of what they went through but what you go through make you what you are Correct. and it's not about what you were it's about what you are now Amen. you know and and i don't want anybody to hold their head down about their past and and feel bad about themselves i don't like that Amen. i don't like that i want them to hold their head up and and say if people are, are are bad just don't deal with them don't deal with them Amen. you know come Amen. to this walk and meet some Amen. good people Amen. meet some good people now what date is that walk again okay well uh, Jazz and Ms. Jazz, is this started out as a one-day event, and now we are in three days. Three days. The first day is prayer around the fountain, uh, September the 11th. Okay. So we're asking you to come and join us in prayer around the fountain, and um, on this day we sit the atmosphere for the weekend to come for the Unity event, the walk, uh, which is September the 14th. And all day long, again, we have speakers, we we'll have uh, praise dancers, choirs. We still need volunteers, donations to come in. Uh, we are holding planning meetings right now. And the last day is September the 15th, and that would be the Unity Concert. Okay. So, yes, ma'am. So, so y'all have a concert, too? Amen. So, okay, the now. Day, the climax. The climax is the concert. The climax. Uh, Mr. Brown, how long you been in with... Uh, uh, this is my second year okay. of the event with them. Uh, last year we were there, I helped host the event down at Spanish Plaza. Okay. And also emceed the concert and was a part of the concert. So uh, I'm excited and honored to be a part of it. I believe in what uh, Kingdom Covenant Connections does. I believe in what Ms. Coates does. Of course, uh, I call her mama. You know, she <laughs> calls me son. So, uh, you know, we represent unity everywhere we go. Amen. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, people got to let it go. They got to let it go. Me, I let it go. I get away from it. I, I just can't deal with it. I got to try to help people. Uh, and I appreciate what you all are doing. And Brandon and uh, you and Ms. Coach, y'all take a lot of time out your busy schedule to help folks. Amen. And and I feel that people, my thing is, I might can't go somewhere, but if I'm working, I may can give a little money. Uh, it's things that we can do to help put things on where you still can truly truly be involved uh it has just been a true blessing uh interviewing you all but we're going to be bringing them back here we can let them just tell the date we got to keep this date up give us a date again okay the first day is september the 11th and that's prayer around the fountain the second day is september the 14th that is the unity walk itself the 15th is the unity concert and we are currently holding planning meetings our next meeting it's August the 8th August. at Sperry Hotel. Okay. Yes, ma'am. 7 p.m. Okay. Uh, Ms. Cove, do you have a phone number in case an artist or uh, somebody want to get with you or maybe donate something to you all? Yes. 
that number is area code 251-753-6253. Okay. All right. Uh, this will conclude the interview. I appreciate both of you all. Keep hip and save life. Keep getting out there doing it. Devil try to stop us a lot of time, but we just got to yes. keep going. Oh, yes. We're going to keep going. Yes. We, we you know, we, we'll give out. We ain't going to give up. Amen. All right. And and all my viewers that are looking at this, you all give them a call. Cause they, they, and I mean, if you need help, go to the Wayne of Life. Yeah. There, there is help. That's help. You ain't got to sell them and say, I just can't kick them. I can't Amen. get rid of it. I just got to keep doing Brandon and told you yeah. what he been through, and he just ain't going back. Amen. He better not. I'll go get him, bro. <laughs> I'll come get you, young man. <laughs> All right. I want y'all to tell him God bless. Oh, God bless you. God bless you, Miss Jazz. All right. And we love all of you all. We love you. Jazz Red. Peace out. Talk show. Me and him in here talking <laughs> about this lazy that, that lady lost some weight. That came here. Uh, what's your name there, uh, young Hollis man? Coates. <laughs> Hollis Coates. We're here at Laser Therapy. You know that he stopped you from smoking. We told you that last week. How about he got a weight loss program? The weight loss program. Tell him about the weight loss program. We're between, between two and four pounds a week. Okay. We got some new programs coming up in the future. For right now, let's do it later. And we're going to do Jazz Red. We're going to do me. Y'all ain't going to follow me on Twitter. Y'all going to follow Jazz on her show. That's we're going right. to do this for four weeks. That's we'll right. come in every week, and I'm going to come in, and we're going to see if I lose weight. We're, everybody on my job want to know, do this really work? So he called me. He said, Red, I'll tell you what. You come over. We're going to try this. We're going we're gonna to do, we're gonna do we're you. Good. So now they'll see if it works. They'll see if it works. Because I know I got to exercise, so I got to commit to exercise, and I'm going to do that. I got my exercise equipment at the house. I'm ready. I'm ready. And I'm happy. And, we finna, we, and, and, and what are we going to do today? Uh, we're going to do the therapy. We're going to do the therapy. Okay. The I'm whole finna, laser program. I'm, I'm finna get started on my laser program. All right. When we come back, y'all going to see Jazz Reed. Yeah, all right. Peace out. All right. He just weighed me. How much I weigh? 180. What? <laughs> The other scale say 200, so he said 180. Okay, y'all seeing Jazz Red him finna go on the laser thing him? Yeah, I'm looking cool. I'm finna go on the laser thing. We finna do the laser now. All right, I'm gonna be Marilyn Monroe in about three weeks, ladies and gentlemen. This is gonna work here. But this, he gonna tell me what to do here. Hold it. All right. Okay. I'm not feeling a thing. And that's good, ain't it? This is painless. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't feel nothing. This is great. I'm gonna be male in my rope. <laughs> Oh, I might, I ain't gonna wear no bikini. I might go wear swimwear. Okay. Yeah, I might be able to put on some swimwear. If this, this, if I can lose weight like this, buddy, I'll do that. I'll work on that. All right, this is a laser hand that's gonna make me not eat. I'm not gonna wanna eat a burger and french fries. This is going to be great. I started stopping at McDonald's on the way in here. <laughs> but I stopped at a fruit place and got a couple of bananas and a soda. And uh, they want to see if it worked too. Y'all are seeing work on it. Don't, you don't feel anything, no. ladies and gentlemen. You don't feel anything. I'm not going to want anything to work. Anything to eat. Oh, you're going to eat something. Yeah, I'm going to eat something. Yeah, but, well, I eat a lot, really. So, uh, that scale told that. I hope I didn't break your scale, man. No, we don't get them. <laughs> you're doing fine. This is great. I don't feel nothing. I don't, that's great. I don't feel anything. I am going to lose weight, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I love being like 11, 12. I used to be small. I exercised a lot. And I went to this diet program years ago. And I, I looked great. I got it off. 
Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do this every week, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You're going to see me every week. For six weeks. For six weeks. Okay, you said four. I know, I know. All right, six. We're going to... Oh, oh, and then and then I'm gonna wear loose clothes, but then when I once I start getting it off, I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna go on and do some sit ups. I stay here four weeks. I know it's gonna be six. It's gonna be six weeks, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be done got it off. You have to exercise with this, ladies and gentlemen. This thing is just not gonna happen for you if you don't exercise. And uh, I can't eat any more ice cream. I had a big milkshake last night. Because I know I was celebrating. I said, okay, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to lose weight. Man. I said, I'm going to lose weight. So you are. This is going to work. How your wife doing, Miss Gill? Great. Good, great. good. Good. Tell Gill I'm coming in and give me some contact lens. Okay. Once I get all this off, I'm going to give me some contact lens. <laughs> I don't know if I recognize you. Yeah, well, I ain't going to change my eye color. I need to get some anyway. I don't want to change. I got light brown eyes. It'll be all right. His wife work at Walmart in the Vision Center. Y'all go out there and see her. What's her name again? Gail. All right, y'all go see Gail out at Walmart at the Vision Center. Okay, turn this way just a little bit. Okay. It seems to act funky, but you don't feel anything, no needles. I don't feel anything. I, I hear my stomach talking. I'm hungry. <laughs> I didn't eat anything this morning. Yeah, I see in the real deal, this is like a reality show here. It is. It's kind of soothing in here. He got the fountain going. Got a light over there. He did have some music. That's something I ain't want to hear though. <laughs> I don't like slow music, man. You can get some rock stuff or something. Oh, wait, we'll tell you. Yeah, I like, I like Michael Jackson or something. <laughs> something to make you move around. Okay. <laughs> I got him in here laughing. <laughs> yeah, I like high energy music. Jazz is a talk show, and we're here with Brother Knapp. How you doing today, Brother Knapp? I'm good, Jezreel. How about yourself? All right, just fine. You went to church today? Uh, yes, I did. I hope you prayed for everybody. I did do a prayer for everyone. Good. And you're going to do something for them on my show? Uh, on you, Brother Nat? Uh, yes, I'm, um, what I'm going to do today is I've been thinking about a song. And this song that I'm thinking about, I might not know the words to it, but if you're there with me, just reach up. The song states, Father, I stretch my hand to thee, and no other help I know. So in other words, it's in the name of Jesus that we ask help and strength from. This is why David said that I will lift up my eyes from whence my help cometh. My help cometh from the Lord who created the heaven and the earth. And also Jesus goes on to say is, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. So if you feel in a certain way today, let's say that things are not going your way. Just call upon the name of Jesus and he shall not only save you, but he shall heal you at the same time. Like I said before, there is no other help I know other than Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I have help, I have strength, I have everything I need to make it. Just call upon his name. Just call upon that wonderful name of Jesus. 
And I declare that you will make it through. You will prepare yourself into the next level. Because in the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Just speak the name of Jesus all over your life right now. Not only to speak the name of Jesus, but plead the blood of Jesus over yourself right now. And I guarantee darkness have to leave. Sickness have to leave. Pain have to leave. Anything that is going on with you have to leave right now in the mighty name of Jesus. This has been an inspirational moment brought to you by Brother Nell. And I can be reached at 251-281-6667. And you be blessed. You want to say hello to Babyface? And hello to my friend Babyface. And if you're looking at us tonight, just look up. Call your help coming from above. And you be blessed as well. All right, Jezreel. Brother Nell. Peace out. Peace.
see my heart beat by week four, I hear your voice. Wish you could hear my voice so I can have a choice. No, you striving for success, and then I'm all made of your flesh. Never thought you would be pregnant, you just wanted to have sex. Didn't even know the man, but he donated his seed. You did make a mistake, Mama God made me. I'm alive in your womb, I'm a part of your soul. God planned out my life a long time ago, and I know that you are scared. I know that you are brave, but believe me when I say God never makes mistakes. Central nervous system The doctor's gonna lie and tell you I ain't got no feelings But look at all the pictures, mama, can't you see my head? My brain is growing well cause I got arms and I got legs Week 7, 8, 9, I got organ bones and structure I can feel it and I can touch it, now I know that you're my mother My organs fully function by the end of week 10 So why you wanna kill me just to justify your sin? I know everybody does it, they think it's no big thing But God's got this book of life in it and it's my name Ain't no need to be ashamed, it ain't as bad as it seems You think I'll be a burden, but I might fulfill your dream And I know that times are rough, I know that money's tough But maybe we just need to turn to God with all this stuff See, we were formed in the dust, and wonderfully made We twill my vocal cords form, now you hear me say I'm alive Salvation. I pray you hear these words and rethink the situation.